my first glimpse of what you did because I saw Joey Clip looking through Instagram one day and saw his profile picture, which has your jacket that you made for him. I was like, wow, what is that? <laughs> Introducing the artist, no namey. On a random day, I was perusing Instagram and ran across Joey Clift, a Cowlitz comedian and Emmy nominated writer known for the series Spirit Rangers, amongst other things. I immediately noticed his new profile picture with this amazing, colorful jacket and tie. <laughs> Intrigued, I saw that Joey credited the indigenous artist by the name of no namey. And going to their account, their pronouns are they, them, my jaw dropped to the floor. I loved their work. I saw colorful painted robots, cameras, giant sized spray cans, skateboards, and even a TV with giant teeth and a tongue. I just had to know more about this indigenous artist, no namey, so I reached out to them. Here is our conversation. Hey folks, this is Vincent Schilling. I'm doing a video with No Namey, an artist uh, who has done some work that I find absolutely spectacular. So let's just get right into it. So No Namey, can you tell us about yourself? Yeah, yeah, my pronouns are they, them. I was born in Wisconsin and I currently live in Portland, Oregon. Okay. Um, I'm a queer two-spirit Ojibwe from the Bad River and Lac de Flambeau tribes in Northern Wisconsin. Um, I'm also a queer, autistic, neurodivergent individual. I know uh, some folks who are on the spectrum. I had a good close friend of mine uh, who was a journalist who passed away a long time ago. Um, she was, you know, on the spectrum. And, and I hear that term a lot, neurodivergent. Yeah, it simply means it's, I'm not neurotypical. Um, and I love that I am not um, neuronormal. Um, <laughs> and I'm on the autistic spectrum. Okay. Um, and I am actually, I'm really, I'm something that I'm really proud of because I think of as, I think my neurodivergency as well as my in, indigenousness, um, it all plays into my artwork and who I am as a person and as an artist. I, I'm assuming this backdrop, which is already fabulous, is, is this part of your studio? <laughs> yeah, we're in my studio right now. God, I just, so can you tell us about your name, No Namey? Yeah, it was on the first piece of paper that was given to me from the hospital where I was born. Uh, it was listed, no name, baby crow. And as an artist, it, it fascinated me um, long after the fact. Uh, and it just speaks a lot to the anonymity of when we were born. And I, when I decided to make art for myself um, several years ago, I decided that, that were, to work with that name and simply add a Y at the end of it. That's that's really awesome. That is such an embrace of, of who you are. I, I love that. Um, what inspired you to create your spectacular art? Why? Why do I do what I do? Well, I think, I mean, I'll, I'll start at the beginning of like, yeah, please, where cardboard art got started. And it probably began the moment my parents first gave me a refrigerator box. <laughs> um, and most of us have an early relationship with uh, cardboard boxes, right? Mm -hmm. um, the box can be a spaceship, it could be a castle, it could be a store. Uh, it could be anything we imagine it to be. And I suppose it took, I took it from that point forward. Um, in my late teens, I built a theater out of cardboard boxes. Uh, it was an homage to the queer artist, John Cocteau. And that truly was the beginning of my artistic career in cardboard. Mm -hmm. um, for the next 10 years following that moment, I worked strictly in black and white cardboard sculpture and installation. Um, and it was a challenge to work just in that style. Um, it looked like a newspaper photograph or like a, a black and white comic strip, sort of what I likened it to be. Um, but when I turned 27, I chose to work uh, in color. And that was the moment of uh, emotional liberation and um, very much of exploration for me. From my perspective, it's like you brought comic books to the world or something. It's just like you're living in this incredible world. <laughs> so, 
What are some of your favorite things that you've made? Ah, I I love my wearable art. Mm -hmm. um, my um, wearable clothing. Um, it looks like drawings, which um, you'll see in some of the some of the photographs. Yeah. Um, I made uh, in New York uh, last year for the other art fair. I made um, an installation called Backstage at the Drag Show. And it was all drag king and drag queen um, clothing. So it was dresses, it was suits, it was a sailor suit, it was gowns. And I had so much fun creating creating those those pieces. Um, and um, so those were that was probably the most fun that I had creating a single installation. And other of my favorite pieces are um, I make guitars and basses. Um, I love instruments. I love the artistry of, uh, of instruments. Um, so that was, that's another, another big one for me. Yeah. I see the guitar down there. I see the head of the guitar or the, the neck. Yeah. <laughs> Can we see it? Yeah. Let's look for it. Let's see it. Oh my gosh. That's, oh my God. I can't take it. Oh my gosh. Wow. What, what materials are that? That is Fabulous. Yeah, so uh, this, it's all comes from a cardboard box, um, multiple cardboard boxes. Um, and the string is paper string. So just to keep within the material spectrum. Um, and uh, I use acrylic paint um, and it's all bonded together with hot glue. That is unbelievable. How long does it take you to make something like that? Um, it could take me a week. That is just beautiful. <laughs> My first glimpse of what you did, because I saw Joey Cliff, I was just looking through Instagram one day and saw his profile picture, which has, you know, your jacket that you made for him for uh, the daytime Emmys. Uh, it was the Children and Family uh, Daytime Emmys. Yeah. And yeah. I saw it and I was like, wow, what is that? <laughs> I was hooked from that moment. Is this something you do like full time? Is this something I do this full time and I'm really me. grateful that I get to do this. It's really strange. Um, it's uh, it's it goes beyond a hobby. I mean, I, it, if, if I if I had other activities going on in my world, that would be my full time hobby. But I'm really grateful that this is what I do full time. Do you ever make like regalia. I have. I've made a ribbon skirt before. Um, that's that was an incredible experience. I loved making a ribbon skirt. It was on National Ribbon Skirt Day, um, and I decided to to just take a crack at it and give it a try. Um, but I think um, there's a little a little insider is that I am working on some more regalia. Something interesting. How does your artwork? connect with your indigeneity? I, my work isn't at first glance um, indigenous, but it is indigenous art. Yeah. Um, my indigenous identity carries into what I do. Um, and I want to break a lot of unspoken rules in a predominantly colonized cisgendered art world by simply existing as an Ojibwe two-spirit person and make art and maybe even uh, break down a few walls and expectations. Right, right. Yeah. You, yeah. That that is that's inspiring because if if I was a young artist and I saw you and you're you're actually living your dream as as an artist and doing what you're doing, I mean that's just that's profoundly worthy of of high praise because that that is not easy to do because the first thing a lot of people think is that well you have to do something you know responsible you have to you have to learn Excel spreadsheets and. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to do. I do know how to do Excel spreadsheets. Me too. I'm very weird about it. <laughs> I'm just, I am dyslexic actually. So for some reason that the structure for me works, I don't know what it is. <laughs> so, so what does your, your family, your partner, your kids, uh, think about the work that you do? Well, uh, I have two kids and okay. they think my art is cool. So it must be cool. Um, and they're really involved with what I do. Um, I like telling them at night, like, this is what I worked on today. Wow. And so I have, I have a really supportive spouse as well. 
Oh, that's great. They're also an artist. They 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 go by the name Stay Tuft, um, okay. and they make um, tufted rug pieces. Um, oh wow! So we we share studio space. So it's, oh wow! It's really awesome. Okay, okay. So artist family. But you must have a wild Halloween. <laughs> 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 yep, we, we really get into the holiday. <laughs> that, that was my dad's uh, birthday, so it was his absolute favorite Halloween. Not Halloween's absolute favorite day, so that's that's just fantastic. Did, so I, I don't know why I came up with this question, but I, I was curious because my life, I dream about my life. Do you dream about your work? Do you dream of stuff? You I just I just don't know why I thought that, but it's an interesting question. I have, uh, <laughs> and it's a little bit wild um, because my style it does look it is indicative of a comic strip or like a graphic novel mm -hmm. um, I have had dreams in that style where everything around me was in this um, specific no namey style wow. and um, you know it's it's probably some of my favorite places to travel to that is I'm awesome. all about it that's awesome so you probably astral project to your to your world <laughs> Yes. That is so cool. Oh my God. You know, it exists. You know, you know, they say that all these alternative realities exist. So that world does exist. Well, I'll be visiting you if that's all right. <laughs> yeah, like, come on over. I'll be like, I'd like to see that world. <laughs> so um, what is your ultimate, ultimate dream to do with what you're doing? I love exhibiting in galleries. Um, I have a, a pretty big show coming up in summertime at Brassworks Gallery um, here in Portland, Oregon. A, a show that I've always wanted to do was a used car lot. So that's a big dream of mine. Yep. Wow. That would be <laughs> Wow, what a concept. Can you tell that I love the stuff that you do so much? Is it possible to see some of your studio at all? So... Oh, Here are some of my giant paint cans. Um, wow. They're pretty large. And here's some of my wall pieces. Wow, that is wow. There, back there is my cardboard pile. Okay. You can't tell. And then more pieces back there. That. You are literally a magical artist. So when you do showings, what, what are some of the things people say? Um, first question is usually, is it really made of cardboard? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and then can I touch it? Um, can and, they? <laughs> well, gently. within reason. Big. Yeah, within, gently and within reason. Um, but I take that as a compliment because people want to connect to the work. They want to interact with it. I'm not offended by by those questions. Your stuff is just phenomenal. I I have to give you, you know, uh, an absolute, absolute, you know, two thumbs up, you know, standing applause, standing ovation, because this is absolutely wonderful. So tell me, Noni, how can uh, people get in touch with your work? How can people follow you? Yeah, so you can go to nonamey.com um, or to my Instagram, which I'm on quite frequently, which is at nonamey, nonamey. Got it. Um, those are two, two contact points. Uh, anyone can uh, find me. Oh, I just have to say that, that uh, I, I, I have a feeling that we're going to continue to see more and more amazing stuff from you all over the place because I, I've never seen this before and I just think it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thanks so much.